What are you doing? Filming. Pictures of us? Yeah. Can I get your badge number? 0016. Cool. Is it shiny enough for you? It's very shiny. All sir. right. You need your driver's license, Mr. Fifth Amendment, right? You filming right now? I am. Oh, come. He's got the camera on. He's got the camera on me right now as we're talking. Hey y'all, Andrew Henderson here. Today I'm with the campaign manager for the Committee for Professional Policing, Cole Yates, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about the campaign to ensure the police. So Cole, tell us about the campaign to ensure the police. So what we're doing, uh, we are a Minneapolis-based political campaign. Um, we are aiming to uh, amend the Minneapolis City Charter, which is a lot like the constitution of the city to uh, require police officers to carry professional liability insurance. Um, it's a lot like uh, car insurance. Um, if you are a bad driver, um, you're going to pay higher rates. Um, if you are a terrible driver and you just uh, cannot learn from uh, your past behavior, um, then you might lose your coverage and your ability to drive. Um, so here in Minneapolis, we have no accountability for police officers. Um, in the past three and a half years, community members have filed roughly 1,300 complaints against officers and absolutely zero of those have resulted in any discipline whatsoever for the officers. Um, tellingly, the only discipline that's been issued uh, as a result of uh, complaints against officers have been from other police officers. Um, so we clearly have a problem here. Um, so we are wanting to uh, uh, provide a financial consequence for officers who abuse their authority under the color of law. And we are hoping that this will increase uh, the safety of Minneapolis from police violence. And we are also uh, hoping that this might be a solution that will finally hold police officers accountable. Um, we are going to be on the ballot uh, November 8th, 2016 here in Minneapolis. Um, we've collected roughly 14,000 petition signatures to get this on the ballot. Um, and uh, we are now uh, going public with our campaign to let everyone know that we do have enough signatures to secure placement on the ballot. And we are moving into a campaign stage. And uh, uh, thank you so much, Andrew, for, for having me. How much has Minneapolis paid out in, in police liability claims? Um, a pretty shocking amount, uh, millions of dollars uh, uh, a year. Um, it obviously fluctuates because we have some huge cases and uh, in certain years and then we have not so many huge cases thankfully in other years. Um, what I can tell you Andrew is that in the past uh, uh, 10 years we're averaging roughly $3,000 an officer in damages uh, and that's per officer average in Minneapolis. Um, so so what's, what's happening is that the taxpayers of Minneapolis are actually bailing out these officers to the tune of millions of dollars a year, where even when you factor in the officers who don't rack up these huge settlements in court, you're averaging about $3,000 an officer that taxpayers are having to bail out every year. Um, we ran some numbers, and surprisingly, um, there, there are roughly 800 officers on the Minneapolis uh, police force. If the city got out of the business of bailing out these officers in court, they could add almost 75 officers to their force, just to give you an idea of the scope of how huge of an issue this is and how much uh, settlements are being racked up in court. Um, one, of the, one of the really uh, beneficial things about our amendment is that uh, the city can actually pay the base rate of the insurance. Um, so you can, think, uh, you can go back to the, the car insurance metaphor. Um, Imagine that someone's covering your insurance premiums as long as you don't get in an accident, as long as you're not charged with drunk driving or uh, speeding, running through an intersection, anything that would make your rates go up. Um, you have no out-of-pocket costs and you also have guaranteed coverage as an officer. Now that's something that officers in Minneapolis actually do not have right now, uh, which is guaranteed coverage. Uh, pretty regularly the city will refuse to cover an officer, um, usually for good reasons. Um, but uh, uh, still, our amendment will provide uh, co guaranteed coverage to officers, and the city can cover the base rate for officers who are not going out into our communities and abusing people, um, you know, terrorizing communities, uh, brutalizing uh, people, uh, and those, in, those officers, the majority of officers will not see any out-of-pocket increases in costs. Now, what this is really intended for is a small amount of officers who are causing the majority of the damage in our communities. 
um, officers like uh, Police Union President Bob Kroll, um, officers like Lieutenant Mike Soro, um, both of whom have racked up so much money in settlements over the years. They have a long record of police complaints by members of the community, uh, a, a very long documented record of brutality. Um, the, the goal of this is to really show those officers that their misconduct isn't welcome in our city anymore. So uh, for, the, for the vast majority of officers who you know, are doing things on the up and up, um, you're not really going to, they're not going to see any out-of-pocket increases, which is one of the, the really big benefits of this. Are there any other cities that are, that are, are, are trying to implement uh, a, a, a structure like this? Not uh, to our knowledge. Um, there, there, uh, there was a bill proposed, I believe it was in Maryland. Um, a lawmaker had uh, proposed this in the State House of Representatives. Um, I, they definitely drew some inspiration from our proposal. Um, reading over the bill, it was pretty clear that uh, uh, we're already starting to have an impact on lawmakers and people, not only here in uh, Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, but also all over the United States. Um, so we are the first to actually propose this idea through a charter amendment. Um, we are working with uh, organizations in Los Angeles, Oakland, uh, New York. Um, we've spoke with some people in Chicago. Um, what we're really trying to do is launch a national movement, which is why um, for viewers who might not, e might not live in Minneapolis or even in Minnesota, um, this is really the proving ground for this idea. It's an extremely innovative idea. Um, but it's also, you know, common sense. Uh, there's so many professions that uh, require uh, liability insurance. Um, some of them are plumbers, uh, roofers, nurses, therapists, um, uh, yoga instructors even. Um, but uh, the people who go into our communities with guns, uh, they do not have coverage. And uh, uh, we're really wanting to change that. So we want to get this off the ground here in Minneapolis first. Then we're going to move to St. Paul while we're working with our national partners to get this spread all over the country. Um, this really is the beginning of a national movement, um, and I'm really excited that uh, um, you gave me the opportunity to share this with your viewers. So cool. Are, are there any events coming up for the, uh, the campaign to ensure the police? Uh, totally. So we, are, uh, we have two of our biggest events of the year coming up. Um, one of those is the uh, May Day Parade and Festival here in Minneapolis. Um, that is on May 1st. Um, we are wanting to have 50 volunteers there uh, circulating the crowd of thousands of people, um, informing them that uh, we will be on the ballot in November and uh, answering any questions they might have about police accountability or the uh, campaign in general. Um, we also are having uh, a, a large group of petitioners at uh, Cinco de Mayo and that will be on Lake Street. Um, so we're entering into a phase where we're wanting to wrap up the uh, collection of signatures. We're planning on turning in our signatures to the city clerk in late May. Um, and at that point, uh, uh, we expect to uh, be placed on the ballot. And uh, uh, we're aiming to get 51% of the vote to make this a part of the uh, uh, Minneapolis city charter. Um, it will be uh, immune from any union contracts. Um, any uh, uh, fiddling with the, with the amendment by the City Council. Um, and uh, we're, we're very excited to be the first campaign in the United States to propose this idea. Um, we're getting a lot of traction. Um, we've made a ton of progress over the past three years. And uh, now we're entering into probably the most important part of this entire campaign, um, the run up to uh, the November election. So, so what are some other resources or how, how, how can people find out about you? Right, totally. So uh, we have a website. It's insurethepolice.org. Um, we also have a really active uh, Facebook. It is uh, facebook.com slash insurethepolice. Um, we will be coming to Twitter soon. Um, there is a, a ton of information on our Facebook, um, our thoughts of the, the latest police accountability news with a local focus in Minnesota. Um, we also have a, a, a very... Uh, in-depth uh, FAQ on our website and we have a lot of information on there. There's also an ability for uh, supporters to sign up to volunteer on the website um, as well as a, uh, a page where you can donate if uh, you want to financially support our campaign. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this at all? Yeah, of course. Um, so we've been doing this. Uh, we've been campaigning for about three years now. This is actually our third attempt at getting us on the ballot. Um, so. 
we're, we're very excited that this time, you know, the third time really is the charm. Um, in the past few months, we've seen an exponential increase in the amount of volunteers we have. We have a very uh, uh, a strong volunteer team that's growing quickly every day. Um, we're starting to see uh, donations come in from people all across the United States. Um, we are, uh, we're seeing a huge uptick in the amount of people that are following us on social media. We're having impacts on activists across the United States. Um, so I just want to, you know, I just want to share with the viewers sort of the ways you can get involved, even if you are uh, outside of the Twin Cities area. Um, if you are in Minneapolis or St. Paul or anywhere in that region, um, obviously the, the best thing you can do to get involved is to go to our website and volunteer. You can sign up at insurethepolice.org slash join. Um, if you are outside of the uh, Twin Cities area, you can like us on Facebook. Again, that is facebook.com slash insurethepolice. Um, you can obviously, if you have the means, uh, financially support this campaign. So hopefully you'll see it in your own community. Um, and uh, uh, you can really help promote us uh, all across the internet and in uh, conversations with uh, other police accountability activists. You can bring this idea up. We are really trying to uh, ignite a national movement here, and it's not going to be possible without the help of uh, uh, people like you. So um, thank you so much for having me, Andrew. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I hope that uh, all the viewers out there really get involved in this innovative campaign. Um, we are really breaking ground here, and we need the support of everyone who uh, uh, is an advocate for police accountability to get involved in this so we can get it passed in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and then hopefully all over the country. So thank you, Andrew. Yeah, thank you for your time.